Sorry. Thank you, Danny. And for giving me this opportunity for the Tuesday evening training. And it's great to have these opportunities to uh, go back over issues that have gone in the past and look forward to upcoming club meetings, etc. And I'm great to be joined here by our incoming district director, Daniel. Uh, Gerard was to be with us, our present district director. He may pop in later on. And Gerard Murphy sends his apologies. He was to be here with us too to get us out of a few corners, but hopefully we'll be able to manage that ourselves. And uh, thanks, Pauline, for coming along, and Philip as well, part of the team, uh, the credentials team. And we have Steve Campion, who is the incoming admin manager. So it's good to have Steve here because I think we'll be picking his brains maybe throughout the meeting where we can make improvements maybe in a, if we need be. And it's good to have you. And to each and every one of you, thanks for taking your time out to come along this evening. So I have put in the chat there in relation to what I'm going to cover here tonight. So the first thing there is uh, feedback. If you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat there, please, as well, or put up your hand and ask a question. It is going to be interactive session. So basically the, the council meeting, which we had in the last few weeks, and we had some issues in relation to people being unable to register. And I will open up the meeting to anybody here that may have something to say on that re in that regard that may have issues in either logging in or registration or whatever. So I'll open it up to the floor, please. And feel free to come in and because we had some feedback prior to this. This is why we kind of organized this. So I'll open it up now to the floor, please. Okay, Elizabeth, yes. Um, Larry, as you know, my president wasn't able to vote mm -hmm. because um, she said she sent her response back and she didn't get a reply. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, this, I've done had some discussions with um, the administrator and I, I'm not sure what has happened, but I, I think the point I want to make, I don't want to overstate it, hmm. but there is something in that process that I believe is um, needs consideration that when, you, when they're sent the email, they, they, seem to, they don't have any confirmation that their email has been received or, and these are people who literally want to vote. So or my, my only point is that as we rethink or we replan for next year, that bit of the process, I believe, needs some consideration. So my question to you is what, what is the thinking or what is the learning from what has happened at the past election? That's my question. Okay, Philip, we'll come in there. Just to respond to that, the email that was sent out several times to district council members, <clears throat> there was a link in that that had to be clicked. If the person clicked on that and registered, they would have got a reply email telling them that they have registered with the link, just exactly the same as they would have for this meeting here this evening. So I don't really see it's necessary for any other email to say that we got your email because they've already got that. It would be totally unnecessary. Um, Mr. Administrator, I, I mean, I work with you on a DLT and I, 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 I have absolutely every confidence in, in what you do. My only problem is that this isn't, it isn't just one person who is stating this problem, it is others. So whether they have missed something or they need extra training, there's something that is not working. That, that is my point. And we need to, to tease out and correct it. If it was one single person, yes, it's more than one. Yeah, I know we have spoken about that. And I did ask for names of people and I did receive some names and none of the names, none of those people whose names I received registered. I don't know what they did, but they didn't register for through the link that was sent to them. Perhaps they assumed that registering on HOVA or whatever registered them for everything. Um, I can't answer to that. I'm not really sure how much more simple it can be made. 
suppose another point there is, yes, there might have been some confusion in relation to HUVA and then separately registration for the council meeting. So that's something, we, that's one lesson learned that we will put in place for the next one if we are online. So that's one, one issue. The other issue is in relation to people's email address. It has to be the one that's registered with Toastmasters International. Now, if in the meantime, people change their email address, which has happened here in Ireland, because Aircom are charging now for their email account. So a lot of people have left, but it's quite possible they could have still their old email registered with Toastmasters International. So what I would ask people is, to go in to Toast, log into Toastmasters International website, click on their name. It brings up their profile on the left hand side. And on the top of that, you'll see edit your profile. So you'll edit your profile, change your contact details if that is the case. Now, I'm not saying, Elizabeth, that was the problem with your uh, people that you have uh, reported to us. However, it's one possibility. The other one, then, is in relation to corporate clubs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're registered in the corporate email. So wh what I would ask is presidents and VPEs of corporate clubs to change their profile as well and put in their own individual email address. It's a simple process. Log into TM International, click on your name on the top part of the, the uh, page. It opens up in your profile on the left-hand side and edit, edit your contact details. And that is a good thing. Sometimes people may have even ticked that they didn't want to receive correspondence by email. That's another scenario when they're joining up. So that's a, another thing you should look out for as well. That's after just coming into my head there. Okay. So Larry, it's Steve. If I could just ask Steve, a question yeah. or raise a, a comment here as well. I mm -hmm. think similar to Elizabeth, I also heard comments from people about problems with registration or late registration. Mm -hmm. And I do suspect a lot of that was coming from confusion about they registered for the conference therefore they didn't realize that they needed to perform some mm. other separate activity yeah. uh, one question and forgive me for not knowing the process here but one question is if the if that separate registration to register on zoom just like we've all done today in order to access this meeting would it not be possible to just use the name and email address list that is on the toastmasters roster and for us to register them all rather than it ask each person to individually go and do that? Is it not possible to just register them so that they will receive the Zoom e email invitation automatically? Well, what you're actually doing is registering to attend a council meeting. So that's an individual choice but as for well people as that, to make. Sorry, yeah. Larry, um, my role as credentials chair is to check everyone who registered and to make sure that they are a president or a VPE, that their club is in good standing and, and that they are in good standing. So you can't just register everybody. Uh, some people did attempt to register and they had been passed on the link to, uh, from their president, one woman in particular. Her president had asked her to come to the meeting, but I had to contact her and say, no, she wasn't president or VPE. So she um, she could not register for a vote. Oh, but so, sorry, Pauline, to just clarify there, are, are we talking about registering in the voting process or are we talking about registering to attend the meeting? Register to attend the council meeting. OK. Yeah. And, are, and is it that only presidents and VPs are allowed to be in the council meeting or are other members allowed to attend but not participate? They can, they can attend but not participate in the elections, but they can, the important the thing about the VPs and, and uh, presidents is they're the ones that vote. They're the ones that um, they have to make that decision themselves to register. They have to make up the quorum. Yeah, to make up the quorum, yeah. So we cannot 
take that control out from their hands, really. The personal choice to attend. We encourage everybody to link in and sign up. As for others that join in, they could link in from outside. I think that was the plan uh, to, I think Philip was it, to, that they could link in from the outside and look in at the meeting. There was a, some way of doing that. We couldn't allow everybody in really because it threw off the whole I think thing they, other people could watch the stream of the meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yes, we we will be looking at at and, and Steve, you will be on board next year if you have any genius idea in relation to what Elizabeth raised there. And get I know Philip has said when you register, you get a, a confirmation email back saying that you 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 have registered. And the important thing there is people to be aware if they don't receive that immediately, it comes back automatically nearly in, in a short space of time. So if you, if you click register and it doesn't come back, I would ask people to contact the credentials team. I registered, but I have received no email back of confirmation. So that's an, another important point maybe for, for voting members to consider. Yes, Steve? So, so Larry, could I just clarify that then? And well, Pauline, based on the comment that you made, you were saying some people were trying to register and then because they weren't eligible to attend, they weren't able to register. So would they have received the automatic email registration in that case, or was there a delay in that? I'm no, just trying they, to understand the process. Right, they, they would have, well, maybe their president received the, the president or the VPE received the, I'm trying to think, oh, this woman registered, yes, yeah, she registered, but when I checked, she must have, Somebody must have sent her the link or the, or, or the information that she could register. Um, and she sent it back to Philip. But when I checked the credentials, she wasn't valid to vote. So she didn't get a vote. And I, I did let her know. But yeah, so so well, I'm, I'm, uh, maybe that, I'm person a, was, that person thought it was a proxy vote allowed, yeah. yes, you see, which, okay. which, which wasn't it did not say online. It on the email, no proxies. But unfortunately, not everyone was reading the email. Mm. So am I, and maybe forgive me if I'm uh, missing the point here, but uh, I, I'm a little confused between the two different things of registering to attend the meeting and the ability to vote in the meeting. Are we saying that the two things are related and they're basically the same process or are they different processes here? Same process. The one who was registered by 12 noon on the Thursday, wasn't it? Yeah. They were those who had the vote in the meeting. Yeah, yeah. We cut it off at twelve noon. Twelve noon on the Thursday. Now, in a normal situation, meeting in person, it would be up to midnight on the night before the meeting. But because if it was online, we had a Pauline had stuff to go through. Garrod had to import a lot of that stuff into Election Runner and get that all set up. So that's why we made up the cut up cut off point as well on the Thursday at twelve noon. To give our allow ourselves time to have the process right, and I think it was proven that it was well run in that instance because the election system went off fairly well. We turned around within five or six minutes each vote that was taken, so we were happy with that end of it. But I have concerns about people that can't uh, get, uh, get that did not get registered because people have a vote and people who want to vote, it's important they get in. So we have to look at. We have to ask, people have to ask the question, are they registered properly themselves on, on Toastmaster International? Is some of their emails going into spam and issues like that? So I think Thank on you. the run up to any election, we will have sessions like this and we'll have more mm -hmm. sessions throughout the year as well in club <clears throat> officer training. And I see Rose is here. You're very welcome, Rose. And we're also involved in a community, community uh, parliamentary procedure set up. We're going to be given workshops D91 and D71 in collaboration. So we're going, that's the agenda for the year ahead, make poor people more aware of what's involved, the process that, that is involved and to educate themselves better on the whole process. And as we are doing that, we are learning as well. I don't uh, claim to know everything, but I'm learning as I'm educating others. And that's the great thing about those masters. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a suggestion there. That there would have been three emails sent out 
and maybe people thought, oh, I think I registered. But I would suggest maybe that the last email maybe gets sent out to anyone who is not registered, stating you have not registered. And perhaps then they will contact somebody mm. rather than thinking, oh yeah, oh yeah, I registered. And in fact, it didn't. Um, I think the point Larry made, and I've felt this very strongly, that this has to be, I think, an ongoing process. I think it has to be done at COT training because we tend to pull this out of the bag late in the year, just before elections. I think that's too late. Yes. We've got acclimatized clubs and presidents that this is an important part of their roles. And, and if we can get that going, I think this year we're all a lot more alert to what happened. I think we can make it work um, together. So I, 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 think, I think the point is made, we know the issues. I think get yeah. the training going. I would say. And as well, I think as well the training from the start to that members uh, can go into Toastmasters International and edit their profile. Because a lot of people don't even know they can get into Toastmasters International. So that could be part of it, how to get in, how to edit something. Yeah. And I think a bit more collaboration then with the conference organization team and the good interest team as well. I think that's another lesson I have learned from this that that we're in touch with him early on in the process and it's clearly stated that registration for the council meeting will be separate because I think there may have been something in Vova where people were asked are you president, are you VP as well so mm. that as well may have caused an issue so lots of learnings and it's good to uh, have this talk and discussion so is there anything else on, on the election that anyone wants to bring up Okay, we'll move along now to the next part is club meetings. And I'm going to have a look at this in relation to parliamentary procedures angle. And this is especially for incoming presidents. Is there many presidents here tonight incoming? Okay, Tom and Steve and VPs as well. It's important VPs, VPs, yeah. VPs will be stepping in for the president when he, the president is out. And the president has a very important role because he's going to be a chairperson, chairperson of meetings. And it should be, the president should be calling a meeting in the month of July for the new team, very early in July, executive officer meetings. So this is crucial. Uh, I presume all the elections are over at this stage. They should be out of the way. So. The new team is in place, and I found with my, I was president of Ross Cray last year, we had a meeting every month for the first six months. And I found that very, very beneficial because you're on top of things then, and you're educating the new team on, on the whole process, how the club runs, and you're keeping, it also keeps people on their toes. That's very important. Your 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 VP, your PRO, and you, they have to come back to the next meeting. And did you do what I asked you on the first meeting? So that's that's crucial that you have the meeting. So why 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 attend the meeting really? It's your right to do so, and it may, you're part of the decision making process. And you're also entitled to full particip participation in the proceedings and to make motions and to vote and to speak. So that's very, very important. But how are meetings controlled? And this is where I've been at meetings uh, outside of Tulsa. This is beneficial to, to the outside world, to you in your job or in the local community. Toastmasters is about educating us to bring out into the wider world. And the lessons we learn in Toastmasters is done in a safe environment. If we make a mistake, there's no one going to bite our heads off. So you can take what you learn in Toastmasters out into the community your local sports club or hockey club or bridge club. They're looking for a chairperson. Put your hand up. And the same, you can use it on your CV at work. This is the power of Toastmasters. I've used all my various roles from club president to VP to area director, division director. I put them on my CV. And even though they mightn't ask you directly about them, you can always bring them into the conversation. For instance, uh, delegating and leading a team. 
By the way, I was area director there last year, over five clubs that organize club contests had to delegate duties. That's the way I used to bring it into my uh, interviews. Even though they mightn't ask you directly, you can always bring it in. Why did you take up that job, they might say? Well, I was testing myself out to see was I able to do it. And you have a job coming up there now. I'm well capable of doing the job. So that's the power of Toastmasters. But to be a good chairperson, and there's, there's only one cure for that, an orderly meeting, and that's rules of order. And there's a, there's a Bible that I'm reading at the moment, Robert's Rules of Order, the latest edition, the 12th edition is about 16 euro or thereabouts. But there's a smaller version that you can get for about 7 euro, which you can use for your club meetings. Now, you have the other bylaws as well and protocols that Toastmasters have, but if the answer is not in there, Robert's Rules has a lot of the, the guidelines as well. So as chairperson, you're organizing a meeting in the month of July. What do you do? Well, firstly, you give adequate notice to your executive. And then you, you, you set up an agenda for the meeting. You can collaborate with your VP, your right-hand person. And, and the VP is a very important person for you for the year ahead. And set up your agenda for the meeting. And you can ask for people to contribute ideas for the agenda. And then you arrive at your, your meeting night. And the first thing is you have to uh, open the meeting. Oh, yeah, the chair must be the very visible. If, if you're around a table, you mustn't be hiding behind somebody. You have to be the center stage because you're the person, you're the leader, you're well-dressed, you're the best-dressed person in the room. And that's important as well. No point to come in a pair of sneakers and a, a raggy shirt and everybody else well-dressed. You have to be, you're the main person there in that room, in that Zoom meeting. They're looking up to you to lead the team. Okay. So, so you, you put the agenda into the floor and it's agreed that the agenda, and if anyone has anything, any new business to add to it there, but I always reckon you should look for people's uh, addition for the agenda beforehand because then you're prepared for what's going to come up during the meeting. If you arrive at the meeting and say any new ideas and someone throws out something, you might not have your homework done. So always try and get that uh, the, the agenda pieces beforehand. And uh, you open the meeting, you establish that, that, that there's a quorum present. That's important as well. Uh, 50 plus one is a quorum, 50% plus one. And then you call the meet, meeting to order. The meeting will come to order. That's all you have to say. These are all jargon words, but they're all important. And then the agenda is approved from the assembly and you move on to your meeting and take each, oh yeah, you take each thing on the agenda then in, in, in rotation. So when you go on, you, you, the, your secondary then is taking the minutes of the meeting. That's crucial as well. And the following meeting then, you must approve the previous meeting's minutes. But the, the thing about minutes is you must send them out after the meeting in a timely fashion. Don't wait for one week. Send them out within 48 hours. It's fresh on people's minds. If you send them out in a week's time or two weeks time, people might have forgotten about what went on at the meeting. So send them out in a timely order. 48 hours, I reckon it should be out to the chairperson. And then you bring the meetings forward to the next meeting. And then you have to get a proposer and a seconder. Now, someone might raise an issue about the minutes that they're not in order. So the agenda, the, meeting, the minutes may have to be adjusted. So the secretary adjusted just the minutes if there are adjustments to be made. And they must be resent out to the members again, the new minutes after amendment. So say you're, they're proposed and second, there's no problem there. The minutes are agreed. Then what I like to see is matters arising. It should be next thing on, the, on your, on your uh, 
Masters are rising. This is a club meeting now. Masters are rising for the minutes. There might, there might have been something someone was supposed to do. And someone raised an issue. Was such a thing done? So give the, give, give the members uh, an opportunity to uh, raise that issue. And you go, you go right through the, the whole agenda then. And I suppose the famous one at the end then is the AOB. Now, this is, I'm not a great fan of AOB. I think everything should be in there from the start, but I've been told you're supposed to put it in, but it can get out of hand. Absolutely can get out of hand. So the chair, the chairperson has to be strong and fair and fair. And the great thing about rules of order is the affirmative always will always uh, win the argument, but the minority is heard. And that's very important that the minority is heard versus a yes or a no against a decision. And sometimes the people that are, are against something or for something that lose the battle, you learn an awful lot from them. I found that down the years, that you learn a lot from people that go against your thinking. And it might cause a change of direction in your decision making. You might have a second look at what you're discussing and say, right, that's a good point to brought up there and make an amendment to whatever you're doing. So don't be, don't be afraid of people that challenge you once they're not destructive. That's the main thing. Once they're not destructive and just at it for the fun. And you'll soon uh, suss them out too. So that's, that's crucial that everybody get, and I try and encourage everybody to talk and speak as well. Some people are quiet and they may not, but as you, you as chairperson, it's important that you try and get everyone involved and make them feel part of the team. All you have to say, what do you think there, uh, Pauline? That's all you have to say, or Tom. And get them, that's the way you get them involved in the discussion. And this goes too for area directors and divisional directors, this conversation we're having here. Because they're your chairpersons as well. But not, you address the top table at a Toastmasters meeting, uh, it's an executive meeting as Mr. President. If you don't have a regular title, it's Mr. Ch Mr. Chairperson mm -hmm. or Madam Chairperson. But when there's a president, president is leading the team, it's Mr. President or Madam President. Or if the VP steps in, uh, they may have to step into that role as well, Mr. VP, you know, or Madam. But if they have no regular title, you just call them Mr. Chairperson or Madam Chairperson. Um, and it's important too that the officers address the chair, every, address the chair through the chair and uh, address to speak through the chair. Don't be cutting in on, on others either. Always go through the chairperson. Just raise your hand and the, a good chairperson will spot who is next. They'll keep a, their, their ducks in a row. If I put up my hand over here and have it up for a long time and then somebody else puts it up five minutes later and the chairperson goes to that person, it's not good business. So try and be inclusive as you can. The first person up with a hand, bring them in first. Sometimes not easy on Zoom if you have two or three pages of, of, of attendees, but around a table in normal circumstances. And this will, in your outside world, this will be the case, maybe at a local club where you're around a table where there's plenty of room. So these are all little important issues because people can get uh, disillusioned if you, know, if, you, if you don't treat everyone equally. And I would also say, the chairperson then should say, I rule that instead of saying I or so, the chair, the chair rules that. Don't be saying I rule that, the chair rules that. That's another important thing. And another thing would be not to be saying you or Elizabeth. Okay, if you're calling up, up to, to uh, for next to speak, you can say Elizabeth next. But if, if Elizabeth is talking about something and somebody comes in to say the, the last speaker or the person from such a club, Ross Gray speakers or Mullingar speakers, uh, you know, small things like that uh, are all part of the formalities. And it's important the chair is impartial as well. 
you shouldn't show your hand really because you're trying to form the opinion of everybody the pros and cons against and for and normally you don't have to vote really in most instances you look for a show of hands the only time maybe you might have to show your hand is if it's uh, an election where you have to vote private, uh, you can vote. Uh, if it's a secret ballot, then you can. There's no problem. Nobody knows where you're at. Or a, a tie vote situation. I was involved with uh, the casting vote, as they call it. Everybody votes, and it's dead level. The chair has already voted, but it's 50-50. So the chair is the casting vote then. I had to do it once. In, in, in a trade union, uh, I was chairperson of a trade union. It was one of the toughest decisions I had ever to make. The, the team was split down the middle and I had to make that casting vote. It wasn't easy. There was a lot of pressure on me to go the other way. But you do what you feel is best for the organization, the club or whatever you are representing. That's all they can do. Some people mightn't like you for it, but you stand to your principle. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Larry, uh, I'll have to leave shortly uh, as I yeah. inform the meeting before it started. I just want to throw in something that uh, I've already started as incoming, pres as incoming president of Westport Postmasters, and that is uh, towards last weekend, I sent uh, a list uh, my 10 point wish list to our club secretary and invited her to send them around to all the incoming committee, inviting each member of the committee to also uh, make out their wish list so that when we meet in August, we'll be able to bring all the wish lists together and select from them what it is we as a club. Uh, as a club committee uh, want to achieve that will benefit our club to the maximum for the uh, coming uh, 12 months. Mm, that's uh, a great so idea, that's Tom, like, It's all a team effort, mm. not yeah. an individual effort. This is awfully important. And I, yeah. I stress that in the covering note that I sent. Yes. So I just thought I'd like to share that, Chairman, with uh, all our colleagues here on, on the panel this evening. I think that's very important that you you include everybody and bring them into your committee meetings and see how you can tease them out and may bring them into fruition. That's a, a very good point, Tom. I would also say if you have an executive meeting and yeah. you have your minutes approved, I think they should go out to the general membership of your club as well. Mm -hmm. You can do a summary of what you've been discussing, what decisions you have made. And any major decision shouldn't be done by the executive. Say if you're changing the, the time of your meeting to 8 o'clock, you should include all your members in for that, call an overall meeting, because they're a very important part of the process, or if you're changing whatever day you meet. Okay, the executive might say it's a good idea, but you must draw in all your members then and give them the opportunity to say yeah or nay, because you'll alienate a novel lot of people if you don't do that. Thank you very much, uh... Chairman Larry right, for uh, granting me the time. God bless. Every success yeah. with the meeting. Apologies. You get, you you get the recording, Tom, anyway. So thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Garmila Malka. Slow. Yeah. Okay. And another, okay, James, yeah. Do you want to come in there or just saying goodbye? Okay. Another key thing is, and I hope this doesn't happen too often, if, if the meeting gets out of order, always use the timeout. The chairperson must remain cool at all times. And especially if it gets very, very personal, you must remain cool with everybody and calm. And if it, things are getting very heated, just take a five minute break. You have that uh, option with a motion there, time out and get the agreement of, 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 of the floor or of the assembly. And it's amazing what a five, five minute break will do. <laughs> and especially if you're meeting in person, let them outside and, and, and cool down. I, I, I had to do it many a time, and it, it's a great weapon to have. And also, if you're not sure of something, don't second guess. People will know you're hoodwinking them. Take a five-minute break as well, and 
seek information from whoever might have it. You might have an, a knowledgeable person on your committee. But don't make a decision that you're not sure of. So they are all uh, parliamentary tips, which if you implement them throughout the year will be very helpful. And I think the crucial thing is your first meeting is set out your goals. In my own club in Roscoe, we, had, we just had five goals. And one was to increase our membership by four, and we more than we doubled that. We got in ten. Another one was to have more than ten people on pathways because uh, we were very low on that end of it, and we surpassed that. Uh, and there was three others, and I think one was about our Facebook page, but unfortunately, the lady was involved in that. She missed out half the year, so that's something we have to work on for the year ahead. But we looked at. At our last, uh, at my last committee meeting there lately, I went back and had a look at our goals that we drew up at the start of the year, and but we we were reviewing review we reviewed them every three months, and at the end of the year we looked back and we were satisfied that we achieved. So uh, set out your goals. Don't make them too extravagant. Make them uh, attainable and achievable. There was no point in me saying I want to get ten new members. Because we were at 12 and we finished up with 23, which was great. Like We had 12, 12 people starting off the year. And I, I said, we're in trouble here. But we had an open night. It was a huge success. And we got a great spin off from that. I even got a 100 euro voucher there from <laughs> Elizabeth there lately. So I've sent that off. I've got a shopping list sent to Toastmaster International via Eileen O'Neill, who will pay the transport charges, packaging charges over. So. I'm waiting for the postman to arrive now with the days with all the goodies. I got I ordered a lot of pens and notepads and that. So when we meet up and we're going to have a summer outing and we'll give them around to each of the members, a little memento. Feel make them feel appreciated. And that's what a team is all about, making everyone feel part of the system. We'll move on to uh, area directors now and Area and divisional directors. This is important now for area director. What, a, what an opportunity for the person to advance even their career. You're taking on a leadership role. And most jobs, it's all about leading, delegating, organizing, planning. You look at any competency, it's full of them. And as an area director, you must have regular, at least two meetings per year. Divisional director is the same. Minimum two. And we have a decision to make now, and maybe Jared will talk in a few minutes about it. We have to maybe decide, are we going to have contests online or in person? And that will be decided by the deck. Area directors, divisional directors are involved there. But how are you going to know which way to vote unless you connect with your presidents? Area directors, their presidents, their VPs, and the VPMs. So call them together before you, you come to vote in, in July for this. We're presuming we'll be voting. I have to discuss it with Daniel yet. Bring them together. Get their opinion. Get the presidents and the VPs and the VPM memberships to find out what the club wants. And then bring them to the council meeting. And trash it out there and have a discussion. And the dairy director and divisional director should do the same thing with his, his team. And you go then, this is the way that I've been instructed to vote. Just don't turn up at the meeting and say, yes, I'm going to vote for or against, when you haven't checked with your team on the, on the ground. So that's crucial, really. I, we done a survey at the last training we had, and it's amazing the amount of area directors had no council meetings, which I find shocking. And the same with some club presidents had no meeting at all throughout the year. They're excluding people's decisions. Who decides where a contest takes place? Who decides contest chair for the, for the, for the contest in your area? So have your council meetings. Minimum, minimum two. And as an area, I think it's an, you can help out each other as well. The last year has been tough. Help out each other. Go to help other clubs. 
and together you can do an awful lot. And as um, Ted, Ted Corcoran said on uh, Sunday evening, he says, don't be afraid to ask for help. He says, we sack so many every year and a new crowd come in and we don't go back looking for help. I thought that was great advice. And even though you might have a mentoring program, as you did say, everybody is willing to help out. So that's, that's my piece. If you have any questions, maybe fire them out here. Or Jared, if you want to come in there in relation to the upcoming international count uh, elections in August. Unmute there, Jared. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, I had uh, an emergency call this evening, so I'm out of home currently. All is okay and under control. Uh, I'll just maybe revert back to that point that you're making with regard to the deck meeting that would happen after the 1st of July when all the new officers are in place. I really feel that some research should be done into this prior. Our district is constituted of two islands and there are different health authorities uh, administering health safety and care and with regard to our COVID. I think it might be very necessary to inform members as to what the current situation is, how safe it is to go back to in-person meetings, etc., so that we don't have kind of a revert back to other things again, so that it is maintained. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just my comment on that. You've covered all that aspect very well, Larry. The upcoming international uh, council meeting will happen during the international convention, which is at the end of August. <clears throat> With regard to this, each club has two votes. And notice will be sent out again after the 1st of July when all the incoming officers are in place. The two officers that have a vote at this meeting are the president of the club and the secretary of the club. Now, there is a platform online this year where each of those can cast their own vote. Also, they can exercise a proxy that proxy can be anybody globally within the whole organization. It doesn't necessarily mean that the district director is the proxy for them or they appoint them as a proxy. They can choose anybody whatsoever, anybody within the club area or wherever. <coughs> the voting goes on for a 24 hour period to cover the whole globe as we vote. The vote happens, we'll say, if there is a, a, a three-way contest for a certain appointment, the vote asks, what is your first preference, your second preference, and your third preference? And that's how the vote is calculated in that situation. Um, more development will be happening. I'm sure it's going to be just a very similar platform to what happened last year and uh, that was quite successful so that um, we have yet, we, all we know are the dates of the convention at this stage in time, but we've got no details of the election process, etc. cetera. All, the, the, the other part of here is the deck decision on contests. I've just already mentioned that with regard to it. Uh, my personal feeling with regard to this, it's good all right that it comes to the deck but I would have nearly have preferred if leadership came from the top from our board of directors as to what best mm -hmm. platform we're to work on into the future, right down to district conference. Because I feel that whatever way we go, other people might want to do alternatively. And if we're at our conference, which we hope to have in person this year, if there was one half of the division uh, representatives wanting to be online and another in person, that may cause confusion. That needs to be ironed out very much in my head with regard to it. Uh, I presume the deck decision that will go to a vote, whether it is just a simple vote or not. I don't see Garot here this evening, but you know it will be a yes or no for either way. Uh, and then again, another alternative will be hybrid, and that has not been actually stated in the communication from headquarters. So that. Unless, for the two things that I've mentioned there, unless there are any questions, uh, I'm happy to take them, please. I think prior to the international vote, we might do a session at some stage because 
an email comes out and there's a direction on the email, but sometimes for a, an incoming president, it might be, it might be that clear as to what to do. So we might do something for members prior to that and show them the process in relation to how it will work out. That's they a very good to, that res, you have to go into TM International, click on their profile. This is from recollection from the last time. And your proxy is in there on TM website. That's that's from recollection of from the last time. So we'll go through that process maybe prior to and explain that's to people good. then. Also, Larry, what's there also are the area directors. You know, they should be in contact with the clubs and with those who are voting that they are going to vote, they've registered for voting or else they've appointed proxies. That's the duty of, a, of an area director. Also, it is imperative on each person that's voting to get to know as best as they can uh, the candidate they're voting for because you're voting in a very responsible part of our uh, Toastmaster organization, the board of directors and candidates supporting that. Um, further than that, um, with regard to our own council meeting and where people uh, missed out this year with regard to registration, I think, again, that's another mop up that the area director should do. And I also should think that the candidates who, who are uh, putting themselves forward should be released uh, a list of those who have registered for vote and those that haven't registered for vote. They do that for the international convention for each candidate that's going up so that there's a release made every two to three days prior to the international mm -hmm. convention. Mm -hmm. And maybe that could be a suggestion or an incorporation for future uh, district council meetings. I think, yeah, that's, that's very important. The area director has a very important role to play. You've been, you, you're in a privileged position. You're over four, four or five teams. It's going to benefit you by doing it to your best ability. And getting involved in all of this, it's good. It's great skill. You're learning skills that will improve as the more you practice. There's no point taking a role and just sitting back and let the world go by. Make it work for you. And you will get all the help you need from people. As Ted said, ask people. Seek uh, guidance. There's plenty of experts out there that have done all of this. Don't be afraid. Ring someone else in another club. Also, I think the commitment of an area director and the division director is, is very vital, very, very important. Also, our club officers. I've already discovered today that with regard to district officer training is happening on the 26th of June. And in communication with a division today, the division director or the assistant division director or an area director are not going to attend that training. That's a huge loss, you know, and that can't be replaced. No matter how much recording you're listening to, I think it's the way we call us, make a, a unit of team. We hear what the leaders are telling us and we need to go by that because that's a policy, that's what we want. That's the quality we want to achieve. Just a, a very important book as well, uh, our manual, the District Leadership Handbook. You can download that from the TM website. And on page 14, it gives you a month by month account for, for uh, club officers, for club presidents, the area directors, divisional directors. It's all beautifully laid out there in different color of what you do month by month. And that should be consulted as well. It should be your Bible, really, for the year ahead. And consult that and see per, per month what you should be doing. In fairness now, and we sometimes we criticize TM for pathways or wherever and difficulty, but they have so much material there. And all you have to do is Google it. You don't even have to go into their own website. You Google, I Google the district leader's handbook. It brought me straight to the Toastmasters website. Like, you know, it's pure magic. And that's the place to go if you want to seek information and find out X, Y, and Z. There's loads of material in there, videos, you name it. Terrific stuff. I'd like to maybe ask people now to make a comment or ask a question or voice an opinion. Elizabeth, yes. Um, well, I want to thank you for an absolutely yes, excellent Elizabeth, session. Yeah. Oh, sorry, am I? Yeah, okay. I want to thank you for an absolutely excellent session. 
Um, what struck me in listening to you, though, is that a lot of what you're saying, I think we're taking it for granted that club presidents and officials and area directors can actually have got that vocabulary and knowledge to run meetings in the way you describe. I think the answer is no. Hmm. I think, first of all, this video, I should take the opportunity to, to, to share it with everybody. I think everyone should see this video. But I do think your parliamentary team should be very busy this year. Mm -hmm. I think visiting, either making videos or visiting clubs and so on, because I think there's so much to learn from. You know, I think the earlier they learn it, the more mm -hmm. easier it is our election <coughs> processes and even the way clubs are run. I mean, you're talking about having meetings and having an agenda and having the agenda adopted. I think you'll find that very, very few clubs are in a position to do, to do that. And Robert's rules, I think maybe every club should be in possess possession of mm. that, of Robert. Maybe this is just a short version. Yeah. Or at least well, the well, <coughs> directors or area directors should have that. That should become a manual of mm. reference for us. So just, just, I, just to recap, I think yeah. you've done a tremendous job, a lot to learn. Don't take it for granted that people know it. I think they don't. Well, Elizabeth, my vision for the year ahead is to reach out to people and give them the opportunity to make themselves more aware of how and the process runs. And I will be there. I have uh, refused a certain position this year in a club because I, I want to put my energy into reaching out to members, whether it is via club officer training or whatever. We're also involved with the uh, parliamentary community across Region 10. And, D91 and D71, we're planning something at the moment as well. So we, we will be we're visible, we will be there for people. And I would also maybe at a, at a club regular meeting, have a, a 15 minute slot on parliamentary procedure. And just take down say one section of maybe Robert's rules or the governing documents and, and just maybe some experienced person within the club, just go through it and try and explain to members what it's all about. I know new members will be baffled by all of this, but small steps will bring you a long way. Yeah, George, yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, what I might suggest is, and I like the idea that came from the previous speaker, is that you did an educational video, not too long, mm. but on mm. parliamentary procedures, the essentials of it. Mm. And then a club can discuss it within themselves and refer to it maybe when election time comes around, etc., or, you know, parliamentary procedures are running a meeting also. We often hear of meetings that are not well run, disorganized, etc. Mm -hmm. But you could do that as a giant effort in Region 10 or with 91 and 71 together, you know, like that. Yeah. You gin somebody up, let them be clarity, brevity, and to the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, Daniel, over to you, I think, or Danny, sorry, Daniel is gone, is he? Danny, yeah, I think uh, even offset, um, it's time to wrap up, it's a sunny summer evening here where I am. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for listening and coming along, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks very much for that, Larry. I, it, it, it's an interesting subject and it's one that people really do need to get their heads around. Um, because, as you said at the beginning, um, there are so many situations in life, in work, mm. where you may need those skills. Mm. Um, and if you've got them, you're going to be one step ahead of a lot of people because mm. these aren't common things. I mean, they're not, to my knowledge, taught in schools, you know, and I've, um, I've worked in schools for a few years. Um, and it's important because in this day and age, there is so much legality surrounding things that you have to be very clear if you're in a business or you're in a job that you are doing things properly and by the book. Um, and if you can learn that in Toastmasters, that's something else you can get out of Toastmasters. So thank you very much for that. I've just had a discussion with Bre uh, Brenda and we will probably um, try and run something at the end, end of July or the beginning of August on voting at the international contest. 
So some of the things you've been talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll, I'll email you later about that. But once again, thank you very much. And uh, I wish everybody a good night and enjoy the rest of your evening, whatever that entails. And hopefully see you again. We've got one more session next week and then the session should begin again in September. So have a pleasant evening and I will see you all soon. Thank you, Danny. Thanks. And Daniel's had to go. He's got a Region 10 meeting. Okay. You can stop the recording over there now. So I will now stop recording. Thank you. Yeah.